Steinbraber. Good morning, Trenton. I bring you greetings from Ithaca College in upstate New York. My name is Sandra Steingraber. I'm a biologist, an author, and a cancer survivor. And for the past 20 years, I've worked in the field of environmental health. I've had the opportunity to testify before the President's Cancer Panel, advise the White House, brief Congress, testify in hearings, and speak before the European Parliament and the United Nations. I'm the author of three books on public health, the most recent of which is Raising Elijah, which identifies fracking as the number one emerging health threat to children. For me, the road to Trenton began in a hospital in a small town in an industrial area along the Illinois River, my hometown. It was here in 1979, a couple days after my 20th birthday, that I heard a doctor tell me that I had bladder cancer. He then asked me questions that I couldn't answer about my possible environmental exposures. And after he left, and I was still lying there exhaling anesthesia, I glanced down at a newspaper that a candy striper had left next to my bed. And the headline was about a place called Love Canal in upstate New York, and about a woman named Lois Gibbs who was engaged in acts of peaceful protest and civil disobedience and that were shining a public spotlight on cancer-causing and birth defect-causing chemicals in her community and on the trespass of these toxic chemicals into the bodies of children and pregnant women. And it occurred to me that I needed to know about that story. She was blazing pa new paths of scientific inquiry she was bringing to bear a public pressure that resulted in new laws to protect children from exposure and make polluters pay. So instead of being filled with a sense of despair and isolation at the moment of my own cancer diagnosis, I was filled with a fighting spirit and a sense of connection. I knew that somehow my fate depended on the success of a human rights movement in a place called Love Canal, New York, where I had never been. And 20 years later, armed with a PhD in biology and a postdoc at Harvard, I published a book about the environmental links to cancer and I titled it Living Downstream. Among other things, Living Downstream documents the presence of chemicals linked to bladder cancer in my hometown's drinking water wells. To this day, no one can tell me how those chemicals got there. The underlying geology should not have allowed that to happen, but there they are. Ten years later, Living Downstream was adopted as a documentary film, which is how I ended up a couple years ago at an environmental film festival in Washington, D.C. for the premiere of my film. I arrived early enough to the theater that I could catch the screening of the film scheduled immediately before mine. And it was a little film called Gasland. And by the end I was absolutely blown away. Because the same chemical carcinogens and mutagens and brain poisons and hormone disruptors that I had been researching for two decades and I knew how they sabotaged developmental pathways, altered subcellular signaling loops, messed up gene expression, and had the power to extinguish human pregnancies at vanishingly low concentrations. These same chemicals, according to Josh Fox, he's telling me that these same chemicals are now being mixed with fresh water and used as a club to smash the bedrock of our nation and extract a fossil fuel in a process called fracking. And to force those chemicals into the rubble of our exploded bedrock, they have to be pumped under a tremendous, oppression, tremendous pressure through our drinking water aquifers and within the watersheds of our mightiest rivers into which streams and groundwaters flow. And so, ever since that accidental viewing of Gasland, my research as a scientist has been focused on fracking. So I have... So I have two things to here to say today. The scientific evidence on fracking's impact on public health is incomplete. It's uncertain. 
It is still emerging, but the data that do exist are troubling. These data argue for a moratorium on drilling in the Delaware River, the source of drinking water for millions. The wheels of science grind very slowly, and scientific inquiry into public health of fracking urgently needs to go on. But in the meantime, while it does, let's keep people out of harm's way. Benefit of the doubt goes to our children, not to the things that threaten our children. Secondly, secondly, I come here today because I know that 3,500 Americans will be diagnosed with cancer today, and they'll be diagnosed with cancer tomorrow, and 3,500 Americans are diagnosed with cancer every single day of the year, and I want the cancer patients who are diagnosed tomorrow, waking up in their hospital bed, bed still exhaling anesthesia and grappling with this terrible news that just arrived in their life, I want them to look down at the headlines and know that people are fighting in Trenton, New Jersey to protect them from toxic trespass. I want all of you and I want all of us to be the Love Canal Homeowners Association for our generation, for young people with cancer now. And I am fighting to keep my own two children from becoming data points in the cancer registry. My daughter, Faith, and I'll leave it to you to decide why a cancer patient might name a child Faith. I brought her here she, uh, my, her teachers let her be pulled out of school because her teacher said the fight to protect the Delaware is the civil rights issue of her day so she can come. And on the, on the bus down here, I was helping her with her history homework, which is about the birth of the United States. We looked at the photograph of Washington crossing the Delaware, which happened on Christmas Day. It's, 1776, and the river was filled with dangerous out, uh, ice flows. Washington and his troops were heading to the Battle of Trenton. And you know who they were fighting? I just learned this from my daughter. They were fighting the British. They were fighting the Hessian mercenaries. So we have come here, not with weapons, but in peace, to throw out the foreign occupiers of our beloved homeland, the gas industries who pretend their business plans are our energy policy and deny us a voice in crafting those energy policies. But behind this peaceful protest, let there be no mistake, we have a fight, powerful fighting spirit. We are willing to give all we have because we know that our lives depend on the abiding ecology of this river. That's why I'm uh, investing the prize money that comes with the Heinz Award into the fight against fracking because there's no better investment that I can make. What good is a retirement policy, which I don't have? What good is money for my, my kids' college education if the molecules that my children are made of, which is the air, food, and water of this place, are contaminated. So here's to the unfractured future. Yeah.